Okay. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, task one, uh, general aisles. Uh, these are going to be letters. Uh, there are, as you may know, three types of letters in aisles. Informal letters, semi-formal letters, and formal letters. So, uh, while I'm talking, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free uh, to... Uh, okay, Natalia, very nice. If you have any questions for me, uh, please feel free to write in the chat. Uh, if you want to speak or to say something, uh, to ask something, something by speaking, also let me know in the chat. I will turn on the microphone for you. I don't turn it on now because it's writing, not speaking, just so that the quality of sound is better. But if you... Uh, uh, hello, Vitaly. Uh, but if um, uh, but if you have any uh, questions that you want to ask by speaking, then let me know. I will turn on the microphone for for some time for you. Uh, okay. So uh, in uh, IELTS general, there are three three uh, types. Uh, there are three basic types of uh, writing: informal, semi-formal, and formal. Uh, and you uh, you can. Um, see whether it's formal or informal by uh, the person you are writing to, the person who is involved. For example, if you are writing uh, to a friend, who, someone who you know personally, that will be an informal letter. If there's someone you know, but maybe it's your boss or, or your colleague, then it's semi-formal. And if it's someone that you don't know or a stranger, then it's usually formal. So. Uh, the differences are not very big between these letters. Uh, the difference is mostly in language. Uh, hello, Tatiana, too. Um, so we are talking about uh, task one IELTS writing. So um, uh, the difference is mostly uh, in language. So uh, in informal letter, it's OK to use contractions. Contractions, these are words like can't, don't, isn't, it's OK. But if you, uh, but you shouldn't use them in semi-formal or formal. You should write "I do not know" uh, rather than "I don't know." So, but abbreviations like "laughing out loud," "lol," "by the way," "btw," "oh my god," "omg," they are not accepted. They're not acceptable. Okay, so uh, in semi-formal, it's almost the same uh, as formal, as official style. Uh, but idioms of, will be possible here. In formal language, as well as in essays, uh, you should uh, avoid them. So, the situation for informal letters uh, is personal. And for semi-formal, it's a uh, usually formal situation or something about a serious situation, such as work. So, in formal letters, uh, the situation is always serious. So, uh, here are the most common topics for... Uh, writing. Uh, if it's informal, it can be, for example, inviting a friend or advising a friend about something, apologizing or thanking a friend, asking a favor, requesting something from a friend, reminding about something, admitting a mistake, appreciation or gratitude, feedback, asking for a suggestion. Uh, these are most common situations. It can be anything, just uh, you will have a, a concrete task and you can write about anything. So semi-formal, it may be arranging accommodation, complaining to a landlord. A landlord is a person who rents out a flat for you, and you rent a flat from him. Making a suggestion, explaining something to a neighbor. And then formal, it can be asking for information, applying for a job, making suggestions or recommendations, complaining to a bank or company about something, providing information to a company, or appreciation, oops, the double P, sorry, uh, and appreciation. All right, so uh, this is a general introduction. So there are basically three types of letters, informal, formal, and semi-formal. And by the task, you can decide if it's a friend, it's informal, if it's a colleague or boss, that's semi-formal. If there is some well, official person, then uh, it's formal. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write them in the chat. So uh, today, uh, we're going to start with formal, oh sorry, uh, letters. Okay, there we go. Uh, 
Uh, here is an example of in, an informal letter. That's what you have. Uh, you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Well, basically, the whole writing task is 60 minutes. Uh, and uh, essay, it's two-thirds of your mark, of your total mark. So actually, you should start with an essay. But since today, uh, uh, people, uh, well, uh, most people are planning to take general IELTS, I decided to start with, with the letter. So uh, in your real test, it's uh, better to start with your essay because uh, it's more important. And you should spend 40 or 45 minutes maximum on this task. Uh, if you don't finish an essay, it's critical. If you don't finish your first task, such as letter, uh, it's not as serious. So it's better to start with an essay. But uh, so uh, about 20 minutes. Uh, a friend who lives in another country has invited you to come and stay with him or her on your next holiday. You're too busy to accept the invitation. Write a letter to a friend, and in your letter, thank him or her for the invitation, explain why you cannot come, ask him or her about other times to visit. So, write at least 150 words. If you remember, the essay is 250 words, task 2, but letter, task 1, uh, this is just 150 words. You do not need to write any addresses. Begin the letter as follows. So it starts with dear, and then you write your name. Don't forget that there is a comma after this greeting, uh, not exclamation mark as in Russian. So there is a comma. Uh, so this is basically what you're going to confront at the exam. Some of the information here uh, is superfluous. Because, well, you, what you need is basically uh, this type of information. Yes, so this is like a scenario. Uh, and there, uh, it, uh, there are two important parts in the scenario. It sets the background, the background, and there are three tasks to do. So you should cover each of these three aspects. Thank your friend for the invitation. Explain why you cannot come and ask him or her about other times to visit. If you ignore one of these uh, tasks, uh, then uh, your task achievement will suffer. Well, and because of this, cohesion and coherence too. Uh, OK, so since this is a friend, the letter is going to be informal. OK, so we're go uh, in our writing, we're going to follow a six-step method. After the lesson, you will receive this presentation with all the information and the recording of this lesson. So don't worry if you skip something. Uh, first, we start with a greeting. Then, like Dear John, for example. Then, reason for writing. I'm writing to, I'm writing to thank you for your invitation, and so on. Some more, uh, you give some more background information, then specific details. A request or suggestion, and then you end your letter uh, with quite traditional phrases like please let me know, or hoping to hear from you soon, your friend, or uh, yours sincerely, yours faithfully, and your name, first name, because this is uh, an informal letter. Okay, so um, as you uh, will see later, uh, there is quite a lot from this letter that you can memorize. There are some pieces that you can use in any informal letter. And that's what we're going to study today. OK. So what you can memorize is the greeting, Dear John. Uh, you can memorize the ending, Please let me know, or I'm hoping to hear forward to he I'm looking forward to hearing from you, or hoping to hear from you. Looking forward to hearing is good for your grammar range, because here you use a gerund after a preposition. So that's, and look forward is a phrasal verb, so that's nice. Reason for writing, I'm looking, uh, I'm writing to, I'm writing to explain something, I'm writing to ask for something, I'm, I'm writing to provide you with directions to my house. Then, uh, when you give details, you can introduce this expression, let me explain my situation in more detail, or let me explain my situation in detail, or let me explain my situation in a bit more detail. Uh, when you're requesting something or suggesting something, you can use this beginning. Could you, and then it's verb and object. For instance, could you bring my wallet to the party? 
Or, can I suggest, and then a subject, verb, and object. Can I suggest that you buy a new shirt? Like this. So it's a request and suggestion. So these, are, these phrases are also typical. Okay, so they can help you start writing. And you will know that you're on topic if you use these expressions. All right. So once again, uh, basically, uh, after you memorize these expressions, your job is going to be to give reasons for right and to provide background information, explain situation in more detail, and request or suggest something. There are basically three steps in writing um, uh, an informal letter. So now uh, you have 20 seconds to write a greeting. Uh, 20 seconds, please write it in the chat. And while you are writing, I will uh, find uh, on my computer the task and I will copy it for you into the chat. Okay, so it's very simple, yes. Dear Anne, uh, Natalia, uh, dear Maria, everything is correct. Uh, so, Natalia, you can also write something. Um, yes, dear Anna, Vitali, don't forget a comma, Zapitaya. Don't forget a comma after the greeting. It's very, it's important. Uh, right. So, it's, it's, there is nothing else. So, dear and the first name. But not dear Mr. something, just dear uh, and first name. Uh, right. Uh, once again, here is the task for you. I will copy it again if necessary. Uh, you can look at it. Uh, so, right. Uh, the next part, here is, uh, you should give a reason for writing. So once again, here is the scenario. It's in the chat and, uh, and here in the presentation. A friend who lives in another country has invited you to come and stay with him, her, on your next holiday. You're too busy to accept the invitation. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, thank him, her, for the invitation. Explain why you cannot come. Ask him, her, about other times to visit. Okay. Okay. So, uh, give a reason for writing. Uh, there are some examples for you. Uh, there are some examples for you. Uh, and you can uh, you can write your own. So you have about two minutes. Uh, here are the examples. I'm writing to thank you for your invitation. Or you can say, I'm writing to let you know that I can't accept your invitation, which you sent me for a stay on my next holiday. I'm writing to show my appreciation, or I'm writing to give my thanks that you have invited me to your home country. Here's a good one with perfective infinitive. It's good for your grammar range. I am delighted to have received your invitation. I am writing to thank you for inviting me to spend a holiday with you. I am writing this letter to thank you for your warm invitation. You, uh, so if you want, you can make a combination of these phrases and make your own, or create something that is totally yours. OK. So thank your friend for the invitation. Please write it in the chat. You have about one maximum two minutes for this.
Okay, so Tatiana, I'm writing um, to say. Uh, so after two, it should be infinitive. So I'm writing to, to say thank you uh, for the invitation. Okay, so it should be to say thank you. For the invitation I have received recently to spend a holiday with you. Okay, I would change it a little bit. Uh, I'm writing to say thank you for the invitation uh, to spend a holiday with you, which I, re which I received recently. Uh, it would be better like this. So, I, once again, I'm uh, writing to say thank you for the invitation to spend a holiday with you, because invitation to spend a holiday with, with you is like one unit. You should put it together, which I received recently. Okay, Vitaly, I'm writing um, to thank you for your warm invitation. Okay, invitation is spelling of invitation. Please pay attention to it. Uh, okay, uh, nice. Uh, I'm writing to thank you for the invitation. I'm really sorry, but I can't accept it. Okay, very nice. Okay, so everyone has... Uh, written, written this. Uh, right. So, the next one is uh, you should give background information. Maybe uh, just a couple of sentences. And you shouldn't give details at this point because you're going to give the details a bit later. So, uh, here is the task for you just in case. Uh, and uh, there are some examples. It's very kind of you, but unfortunately, I won't be able to make it uh, due to my very hectic schedule. You don't give details. You just explain, you give a general explanation why you can't come to visit your friend. Uh, you can also say, unfortunately, I won't be able to get there due to my job details. So you'll have to write such a sentence. You have about two minutes to... Uh, or, but unfortunately, I'll be, a, uh, I'll be busy at that time because of my hectic job schedule. Um, alternatively, you can say, because of my work schedule, I won't be able to make it. Or, unfortunately, I can't make it as I have a production release of the software I'm working on. So, if you are ready to, so for example, Vital, it might be uh, good for you, for example. If you are ready to speak about software and production and release of software. Or, unfortunately, I won't be able to enjoy my holiday with you because I have an important appointment with our family doctor regarding my mom's health issues. So, uh, if, you, um, if you are ready to talk about uh, health problems, uh, if, you're, if you know medical English and you can uh, use specific words that will be good for your lexical resource, you can discuss this later in your uh, letter, okay? Or you can say, the, this idea looks exciting. However, I'm afraid my work commitment cannot make this possible. Uh, one more example. Thanks for your kind invitation, but due to my work commitment, I'm not able to make it. And one more. This was sweet of you. However, I'm afraid I cannot accept your invitation as I have a lot of work. So, please write your sentence uh, giving some background information. Just general, general information about why you can't come. Uh, it would also be good to copy your sentences after I correct them uh, into a separate file so you can put your letter together after this.
okay, Natalia? Unfortunately, I'll be too busy with my work. Okay, that is absolutely fine. Uh, just your sentence may is maybe a bit short, and there might be problems that you will not have 150 words in the end. So maybe I'm too busy with my work and give it one more general, uh, uh, some general piece of information. Why? Because I have some deadline at work. There is some project at work, and so on. Okay, uh, so Tatiana, it's very kind of you, but unfortunately, I can't accept the invitation due to my unexpected family issues for these holidays. Okay, very nice, very good, perfect. Uh, so Vitaly, unfortunately, I won't be able to get there because I have to finish my work. Tomorrow is deadline. Uh, I, um, so uh, be, because I have to finish my work, then full stop, Tochka, full stop, and then uh, the deadline is tomorrow. So there should be two sentences. Very nice. Okay. So uh, if there are any other sentences, you can write them a bit later. Don't forget to copy your sentences into a separate file. So at the end of this, uh, well, at this lesson, we can put them together and have a look at them. Okay. Now, uh, explain the situation in detail. You should give specific details here. Uh, here's my example. Let me. Uh, you, you normally start with this sentence. So this sentence uh, is standard. So you can repeat it in uh, in every letter, basically. Uh, let me explain my situation in more detail. If you don't have enough words, you can say, "Let me explain my situation in a bit more detail." Uh, I recently started a new job teaching English. What's well, about me? Uh, and I've been working around the clock, or you can say I've been working virtually around the clock. I don't mean to complain. I've been enjoying it immensely, means very much. Uh, the school I'm working at is actually my old high school. It's really quite interesting teaching with people who used to be my teachers. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, here you can see five sentences. So also try to write about five, maybe six, maybe four sentences including the first one. Let me explain my situation in more detail. You have three, four, five minutes for this.
So I have copied the task once again, just in case. Uh, the detail means you, you explain why you cannot come in three, four sentences. Okay, so uh, the, Tatiana, uh, is, this is Tatiana's example. Let me explain my situation in more uh, detail. Um, detail is uncountable, so uh, in more detail. So uh, you, should, you don't need S here. Uh, okay. Uh, as you know, okay, okay. So uh, as you know, my son is going to a music school and during next holiday his music class decided to go to the theater with a performance, okay. They have spent, so it's spent, 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 so it should be like this. Uh, they have spent a lot of time uh, preparing to spend time doing something. I spent a lot of time preparing, so they have spent a lot of time preparing for the performance and we couldn't go there. Uh, so, and you, you cannot say it like this, and we have to go, we have to go there. Or you, can, or you can say, we can't miss the performance, or we can't skip the performance, alternatively. We can't skip the performance. Uh, okay, then, Vitaly, let me explain uh, my situation uh, in more detail. Detail is uncountable. Then, capital letter, I have been working in this company for only two months. Uh, and I have to work around the clock, okay, uh, because I have probation. Uh, yes, I, I have probation or I am on probation. Yes, you can also say I am or I am, it's, uh, it's possible, I'm on probation. Okay, uh, and I want to say my success in this company depends on me now. So, to depend on my success in this company uh, depends on me, yes. Okay. So, I have to do my best. Yes, very nice. Then, uh, the spelling of success, it's double C. So, success is like this. Yes, uh-huh. So we're waiting for Natalia's sentence. So your sentences are nice after you correct your grammar. That will be nice. Okay, so Natalia's sentence. Let me, let me explain my situation in more de detail. I recently started a new project about theaters in our city with my pupils and I have to work days and nights to be able to arrange it. Very good. I don't mean to complain, but I make hundreds of telephone calls buy tickets, get information, and so on. Uh, okay, nice. Uh, two things. Uh, you need a comma before but, and uh, telephone is the word from the mid-20th century. Everybody says phone calls. Uh, uh, so telephone, it's something that they used to say 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. So, uh, for example, when I studied at school, yes, in our Russian school books, we had the word telephone. But everybody says phone, cell phone, mobile phone, phone call, and so on, not telephone. Telephone sounds really something like classical, really classical. Okay, it's not a mistake, of course, but, uh, and just one comma. So the rest is just wonderful. Okay. Uh, and then you make a request or suggestion. So here, here's my example. Could you let me know of another time you'll be free? I would love to come today. I'm interested in seeing your new house and meeting your new wife. I'll be free in the new year because of school holidays and I'll also be free in winter. I'd certainly love to escape the cold to visit you then. So here's an example. Uh, and in the task, you should ask about other times to visit. So request for this information. Uh, also make a question and three, about three, four sentences. Again, you have four or five minutes for this.
Okay, so Vitaly, uh, could you let me know of another time you'll be free? And then you need a question mark here. Could you let me know another time you'll be free? Question mark. Uh, uh, then, uh, because you, it's not nice to start with, because I'm interested in seeing your children. You don't need apostrophe S. Uh, I'm interested in seeing your children, full stop, period, Dochka. I miss them, I like playing with them, and I have a request for you. These are our, all four sentences. They are very, uh, very simple sentences, but they should be separate sentences. So uh, you need to put full stops. Uh, I'm interested in seeing your children, full stop, I miss them, full, full stop, I like playing with them, full stop, and I have a, a request for you, you need a. I have a request for you. When you have free time, call me, please, and we will decide about our meeting, or, or we'll decide the time of our meeting. Or you can also say, we will arrange the time. Yes, we will arrange the time of our meeting. OK, so Tatiana, could you let me know of another time you'll be free? OK, I would love to come to stay and share some news with you. OK, also. Then you need a comma. Also, I am interested in seeing your new dress, which you bought for celebrating uh, the new year with colleagues. This is how you spell colleagues. I, I've written this in the chat. Uh, colleagues at work. I'll be free on holiday. On holiday or during holidays. So on holiday, not in. Uh, on holiday or during holidays, right after the new year, because we have, okay, Look, I just lost it, uh, okay, because we uh, have a long time free from work during that time. Uh, it's called, we have a time of work. Yes, we have time of work. This is, this is what it's called in English. Okay, right. Uh, so once again, um, I'll be free uh, during holidays, right after the new year, because we have long time off work during that time. Okay, then if you correct this, it will be brilliant. Uh, so Natalia, could you be so generous to give me? Uh, sometimes, uh, as to give me. Uh, in English, they say it like this. Uh, could, you give, uh, could you be so kind, or would you be so kind as to do something? So as to give, you need this, this one. Uh, it sounds even more polite. Uh, could you be so generous as to give me time to cope with my job issues? Nice. A question mark at the end, because it's a question. I'm sure I'll be able... Oh, I'm sure I'll be free in a couple of weeks. So I'm eager to see you in September, if you are ready to, to devote me your time. Okay, or if you are ready to devote some of your time to me. Uh, okay, or if you're ready to devote me your time. I would say some of your time. It so sounds more polite. Very nice, very nice. Okay, uh, so now uh, please finish, uh, well, with the end, sign off and your name. Uh, the end, sign it's just three lines. Uh, basically, they are standard. What you need to do is just your, uh, put your name. So, please let me know, or hoping to hear from you soon, or I, uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you soon. Let me type this in the chat. So, I'll be, I'll be looking forward. To seeing you soon, yes. I'll be looking forward to seeing you soon. Um, it's one more possible variant. Your friend and your name. Okay, Natalia, I hope to hear from you soon. Hope to hear from you soon. Okay. You can also say hoping to hear from you soon. Oh, hope to hear or I hope to hear from you soon.
I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Very, very nice, Tatiana. And basically what you need is your friend, yes, your friend Natalia, or your friend Tatiana, or your friend Vitaly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, Tatiana. So uh, now let's put uh, all these uh, uh, all these parts together. So please put all, all these uh, parts together. Uh, copy it into a separate file, uh, and after this you can put it in the chat. While you're doing this, I can show you my example. So here's the task that we have already discussed. And here's my letter. Dear John, I'm writing to let you know that I'm delighted to have received your warm invitation. It's very kind of you, but unfortunately I won't be able to make it due to my very hectic schedule and my work deadlines. Let me explain my situation in more detail. I have recently started a new job teaching Russian language to foreign students, and I've been working virtually around the clock. I don't mean to complain. I've been enjoying it immensely. The place I'm working at is actually the university I graduated from. It's really quite interesting teaching with people who used to be my professors. Could you let me know if any other time would be possible for you? I would love to come to stay. I'm interested in seeing your new house and meeting your new wife. I'll be free in the new year and Christmas because of school holidays, and I'll also be free in winter. I'd certainly love to escape the cold to visit you then. Hoping to hear from you soon, your friend, Yuri. Okay, so now you have a couple of minutes uh, to uh, put all this together into one text. So try to avoid the mistakes that that you made uh, in the first time. Okay, so Tatiana, this is your variant. Uh, dear Maria, I'm writing to say you thank you. You didn't need you to say thank you for the invitation to spend a holiday with you, which I have received recently. Okay, uh, just you don't need you to say thank you. I'm really sorry, uh, recently and then full stop after this to finish the sentence. I'm really sorry, comma, but I can't accept it. Uh, it's very kind of you. But unfortunately, I can't accept the invitation due to my unexpected family issues for these holidays. Full stop, period, Tochka. Let me explain my situation in more detail. Detail, not details. Uh, as you know, my son is going to a music school. And during uh, next holiday, his music class decided to go to the theater with a performance. They have spent, they have spent, I will write this for you. Okay, uh, they have spent a lot of time preparing for the performance, and we can't skip the, and we can't skip it. Uh, you don't need to repeat the performance. Uh, so a lot of time preparing for the performance, and we can't skip it. Could you let me know uh, of another time you'll be free? I would love to come to stay and share some news with you. And I'm uh, also I'm interested in seeing your new dress, which you bought for celebrating. Just one second. Scroll it down. Celebrating New Year with colleagues from work. Uh, you don't need a with uh, colleagues because it's plural. At work or colleagues from work. You can also call them. I'll be free on holidays right after the New Year because without off because we have uh, because we have long time off work. Uh, it's not uh, so the spelling is like this time, and then you say off work. The hyphen should be after off, not before off. Off work during that time. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Period. Full stop. Your friend, Tatiana. Uh, okay, so uh, the new year is somewhere in the middle. It was also, so once you say uh, uh, that you bought 
for celebrating New Year. So it should be the New Year. And I'll be free on holidays right after the New Year. So you need the. The New Year. Okay, very nice. Very nice. I think we can even post it uh, on our website if you don't mind. Okay, so this is Vitaly's letter. So, dear Anna, I'm writing to thank you for your warm invitation. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get there because I have to finish my work. The deadline is tomorrow. You need the. The deadline is tomorrow. Let me explain my situation in more detail. Detail. Uh, then full stop, точка, and you start a new sentence. Uh, I have been working in this company for only two months, okay? And I have to work around the clock because I have probation or I am on probation. I want to say my success, uh, you can say that, but it's not necessary. I want to say that my success in this company depends on me now. I have to do my best. Could you let me know of another time you'll be free? Because I'm interested in seeing your children. I miss them. I like playing with them. I have a, um, And then uh, you start a new paragraph. I have a request for you. Oh, when you when you have I have a request for you. And then you also put a full stop and start a new sentence. Uh, when you have free time, uh, call me please and we will decide the time uh, of our meeting. So the time of our meeting. Okay, I hope to hear from you soon. And one more, uh, call me please. Uh, you can also say, could you please call me? It sounds more polite. Could you please call me? Or would you mind calling me? Would you mind calling me? Okay, or would you be so kind? Would you be so kind? Uh, would you be so kind uh, as to call me like this? Would you be so kind as to call me? Okay, sorry, I can't send you the whole letter as I haven't understood how to do it. Uh, okay, uh, you don't understand how to how to uh, how to copy. Uh, so uh, if you can, please send it to send it to me. Um, to my uh, email, it's right here. I'll write it for you. Uh, please send it to my email. I will copy it from there to this. Uh, well, uh, to this chat. You you can do it now if you if you if you can. So uh, then I will have a look at it. If not, then okay. Uh, I will just respond in your letter. So, if there are any questions, uh, if there are any questions in, uh, uh, sorry, questions about informal letters, uh, you are free to ask them. Uh, by the way, Natalia, uh, can you read your letter if I uh, if I turn on the microphone for you? Can you read it for us? Oh, oh, okay. I understand. So you 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 cannot copy it from the chat, uh, from the chat, and not into the chat. I understand. Um, then 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 uh, this uh, chat is kept is kept uh, after the webinar. I will try to copy it for you. Okay, I understand your problem. Uh, so you just lost it. Uh, first, I thought you didn't know how to copy it into the chat. You don't. You can't copy it from the chat. Okay, I see. Uh, it is still there, so we will, it's still, it will still be available after the webinar, so don't worry. All right, so uh, any questions about informal letters? Uh, if there are no, 
then uh, we're of semi-formal letter. Uh, here is an example of a semi-formal letter. You're applying for a job and you need a letter of reference. Write a letter to a former boss. In your letter, describe the job you're applying for, uh, say what you want included in your reference letter, request that your boss send you the letter by the end of the week. So there are three points. Uh, again, uh, you will have to start your letter with dear it can be Mr. because this is semi-formal. Maybe you call your boss by your first name, or maybe you call your boss by your by, by his or her surname, Mr. Mr. or Miss something. Right, 150 words still. So, uh, by the way, when an examiner checks your letter, as well as your essay, uh, he or she looks at four aspects. Uh, whether you write on topic, this is called task achievement. Uh, uh, show, uh, so whether or not you use precise vocabulary, so it means exact words that you need. Uh, this is called lexical resource. Uh, that you use accurate grammar, this is called grammar range and accuracy. So it's not, not only uh, using uh, correct grammar, but also using different grammar constructions, as well as in speaking that we're going to practice tomorrow. So. Um, this accurate grammar. Uh, and, and now I didn't ask you to use lots of different grammar constructions because uh, you just need to get used to writing. You just need to uh, get the skill of writing a letter and then we'll try to develop your grammar and use conditional sentences, inversion and so on. And you should use a good structure. Well I give you the structure so uh, with structure everything should be fine. So uh, again there is a six-step method. Uh, there's a greeting, reason for writing, background information, details, request suggestion, and ending sign-off and full name. Uh, uh, what you need to memorize is the greeting, dear Michael or dear Mr. Johnson. It depends on, well, you can write both in, in the semi letter. I'm writing two. And you explain why you're writing. Let me explain in more detail. Explain more detail. Would you be able to, when you make a request, I look forward to hearing from you, yours sincerely. It's not you, you don't write your friend. And then you write your first name and surname. You give your full name because this is a semi formal letter. Rather than uh, Tatiana or Vitali or Natalia, you write, uh, well, your first name and your last name. Okay. So, what you have to do here is to give a reason for writing and provide background information. Then explain the situation in more detail uh, and request or suggest something. So, uh, there are actually uh, three tasks. So, first of all, there's the greeting. You can start with Dear Michael or Dear Mr. Smith. Don't forget capital letter for the name. Don't forget the comma at the end. Uh, after miss, you can put a full stop, but it's not necessary. If you omit it, it's not a mistake. So you have 20 seconds. Please write a greeting. OK, dear Michael. Mm -hmm. Dear Mr. Green, okay. Dear Mr. Fred, nice, brilliant. Uh, then a reason for writing. I'm writing to plus verb. I'm writing to ask you <clears throat> if you would kindly write me a reference letter. I'm writing to ask you to do me a favor. Please, can you write me a reference letter for a job? I'm writing to, requ to request a favor. It would be great, conditional sentence, it would be great if you could write a reference letter for me. So now uh, it should be general uh, reason for writing.
So I have copied the task once again for you in the chat. You're applying for a job and you need a letter of reference. Write a letter to a former boss in your letter. Describe the job you're looking for. Say what you want included in your reference. So you just describe the, uh, here you just uh, uh, um, express your reason for writing so that you are applying for a job and you need a letter of reference. Okay, so Tatiana, I'm writing to request a favor. Uh, your spelling of favor is American English, so don't forget to write everything else in American English too. Uh, in British English, there is you uh, in favor. Uh, I, I would be grateful if you could write a reference letter for me. Brilliant, everything is perfect. I'm writing to request a favor. Mm -hmm. I would be grateful if you could write a reference letter for me. Perfect. So I'm writing, Vitaly, I'm... Um, Yes, Tatiana, so if you want, you can write favor in uh, either spelling. So British and American uh, spellings, both of them are correct in IELTS. So, Vitaly, I am writing to ask you to do me a favor. Uh, please, could you write a reference letter for a job for me, I would add. C could you write a reference letter for a job for me, like this. Uh, Natalia, I am writing to ask you to do me a favor. Could you be so generous as to write me a reference letter? Uh, yes, uh, Natalia, but you need a question after this. Uh, could you be so generous as to write me a reference letter? With a question mark. Okay. Uh, right. So everything is fine here. Let's move on. Uh, then uh, you need uh, to give background information. Uh, about two sentences. So these, this is completely fictitious. Uh, I invented it and used my imagination for this. So the job I'm applying for is in the tourism industry. And then you give just a little bit of detail. More specifically, I hope to give surfing lessons to tourists in Bali. Okay. Then uh, instead of more specifically, you can uh, say in particular. So the job I'm applying for is, and more specifically, most likely these are the sentences you will want to keep. But it's not necessary. There are some more examples. I'm applying for a new position as a supervisor, supervisor engineer, engineer. More specifically, the job is in the laboratory department. I am applying for a job at a university where I'll be teaching human resources to undergraduate students. The job I'm applying for is in the telecommunication industry. More specifically, I hope I will be able to work on certain technical tools of my interest. Okay. Here are some examples. You have two minutes. Please write two sentences. Uh, give background information about your job. This is bullet point one. Describe the job you're applying for.
Okay, Tatiana, I'm applying for a position as a chief electrical engineer. More specifically, specifically it's double L. Uh, the job is in the Ministry of Energy. It's a ministry. Uh, I, I believe it's Ministry of Energetics, but I might be wrong. Maybe energy. Uh, high voltage department. Or uh, the the job is in the or, or um, in the high voltage department. Okay, nice. So spelling of ministry. Uh, Vitali, uh, the job I'm applying is in the programming. Uh, is in program without the exactly JavaScript. Uh, not exactly, but uh, particularly or in particular. Uh, more specifically, I want to be able to give a big course for programmers of our company. Uh, okay, yes. So, um, Natalia, the job I'm applying for is in a private school. Okay, more specifically, I hope I will be able to work with three, four-year-old children. Very good. Year old, it's without S. Three, four-year-old children. I'm called three, four-year-olds as well. Brilliant. So now we're moving on to the next step. So uh, you explain in detail. So um, let, uh, here's my example. Let me explain in more detail. Remember the detail here to explain in detail. It's singular, not plural. I know that we work together as teachers, but I would appreciate if you could include information about my character. You could describe my hardworking and amicable personality. For example, in addition, uh, if you could possibly mention my ability with foreign languages, that would be excellent. If you remember, I speak English, German, and Hebrew. So here, uh, please say what you want included in the letter. For example, uh, how good you are with people, how intelligent you are with computers, and so on. So how, know, how well you know uh, electricity. Uh, so you begin with, let me explain in more detail. And you give four or five uh, more sentences. Uh, make it polite. Uh, use, you can use modal verbs you might want to mention. Or if you could mention this and that, that would be very nice, that would be great, that would be wonderful, that would be perfect, and so on. Uh, there are some more examples. Let me describe the content of the reference letter in more detail. Uh, could I suggest that you mention how dedicated I am as a worker? It would be fantastic if you described in punctuality, approachability, and well-formed capacity to work in a team. Well, this is for band 8, at least.
Okay, so Tatiana, let me explain in more detail L is missing. Uh, could I suggest that you mention my current position in tender and sale department? Okay. Uh, I don't know what ends. Maybe there is some misprint, maybe it's a mistake or it's something that I don't know what that is. Uh, tender, so, so my current position in tender, oh, end sale, okay, okay. Tender and sale department include um, information about my character. Okay, so I suggest that you mention my current position in tender and probably include information about my character. And include information, okay, about my character. I would like you to describe. I'd like you to describe me as a hard worker and active person. So, uh, I'd like you to describe me as a hard working, hard working and active person. Like this, for example. In addition, you could possibly, you could possibly uh, mention my ability with foreign languages and communication with foreign, the spelling of foreign, like this, customers. That would be excellent. With foreign customers, and then you put a comma. Uh, that would be excellent. Okay. Excellent. Uh, if you remember, I speak English and French. Okay. Uh, instead of I speak, uh, you can say I am fluent in. Uh, just to make it a bit more complicated, because the language is a bit simple for seven. For seven, that might be too simple. It's even if you correct your mistakes, you need to add complexity of grammar and complexity of vocabulary. But we'll deal with this later. So, uh, Vitaly, let me explain in more detail. I have been programming for five years, okay? So my experience in programming is very big. Okay, uh, I would like to describe about my idea, to describe my idea, without about. Okay, I want to improve skills, uh, programmers, uh, skills of programmers in your company. Yes, I would like to improve uh, the skills of programmers in your company. To my mind, when your company has, uh, not when, but probably if, if your company has, because companies eat and should be has, um, good clever workers, company the company will reach success. Okay, uh, will be a success. In English, you say will be successful or will be a success. In Russian, we say имеет успех. In English, you say to be a success rather than have. Okay, nice. Okay, so Natalia, you can also write your text. So to my mind, if your company has good and clever workers, the company will be a success like this. Okay, Natalia, let me explain in more detail. I would, it would be really uh, brilliant, it's a strong adjective. Before brilliant, you don't need really. You can say really nice, but brilliant, it's already really nice. So you don't need really. Uh, it would be brilliant if you could mention how good I am at communication with kids and their parents. It is really important for me to be presented, okay, uh, as a creative person with good imagination. In addition, my new director wants me to be hardworking and punctual. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Instead of really important, this is uh, useful both for speaking and writing. There, uh, there are a number of synonyms instead of important. For example, you can replace this with crucial or vital, or you can say something is of uh, great significance. Because if you say very important, it's too simple. You can also have great significance, oh, not significance, significance. Sorry. Uh, 
So of great significance or of significant importance, uh, crucial, vital, and there are some other synonyms too. Okay, right, thank you. So let's move on. Uh, then you need to request or suggest. So remember, <clears throat> you need this letter by the end of the week. So you should ask the boss to uh, write the letter as soon as possible. So here are the questions. Uh, here's the example. Would you be able to deliver me this letter by the end of the week? I have a tight deadline for the job application as the job begins in less than a fortnight. Fortnight means two weeks. It would mean a lot to me if you could write this letter as soon as you possibly can. So uh, you should request the boss send you the, uh, this, uh, request that your boss send you this letter by the end of the week. Uh, or please write about three sentences uh, and you have five minutes for that. So here are some examples. Would it be possible for you to finalize my letter by the end of this week? I would appreciate that very much. Or, I humbly request you to send this letter in a company letterhead before the end of the week, as I am committed to deliver it along with my personal document package. It would be really helpful if you could hand it in on time. The deadline to apply for this job with reference letters is this Monday, and I do not want to miss this opportunity. I know you have a very tight schedule, but I, would, um, but I would be highly thankful if you could mail me the letter as soon as you can. Or you can write, the deadline for the application is the end of this week. Would it be possible for you to deliver the letter within this week? I would be so grateful if you could do me this favor. Okay, so these are the examples. Please write your own request. Request that your boss send you the letter by the end of the week. Okay, so Tatiana, the deadline for the application is the end of this week. It would be great if I received second conditional after if there should be 
um, then it should be past simple. It will be great if I receive the letter from you not later than this Friday morning. Okay? Fine. Okay, Natalia, I humbly request you to send this letter in a school letterhead by the end of the week. It would be really helpful if you could do it on time. Okay? Brilliant. Okay, Natalia, we're waiting for your variant. Okay. Would you be able to deliver me this letter by the end of the month? Okay. Uh, but remember that in the task it says this week. So uh, uh, in the you should say uh, you should say by the end of the well maybe it's the end of the month maybe it's the last the last week of the month. Okay. So um, but it's better to say week. Now I have lots of invitations, but I want to work in your. Why in your company? This is your former boss, your former boss. Uh, you don't want to work in that company anymore. You actually left that job, so but you are asking for a reference, for a recommendation. So uh, in that company. Uh, first of all, your company is very big and popular in the whole world. Second, secondly, let me say secondly. It, again, it's not your company, but the company I, uh, I want to, that you want to work for. So secondly, I prefer, uh, I would prefer to work, prefer to work. Uh, so I would prefer to work uh, in New York, spelling of New York, uh, where uh, headquarters is called, the company's office or the headquarters, headquarters. are located, or where the headquarters are located. Okay. In conclusion, I use products of your company. I will be thankful if you could mail me a letter as soon as you can. Uh, okay. Uh, it's just that you, you're writing to your former boss and you do not want to work in this company. You want to work in another company, but you're asking your former boss, your ex-boss, for recommendations. Uh, and what you wrote is uh, is uh, kind of off topic, so this is a deviation from the topic. And if you write it like this, uh, then you will have problems with task achievement, and because of this, coherence and perfection. All right, now let's write three sentences. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you, and in this essay, uh, you want to get that as soon as possible, so you can write. I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience, so the earliest time possible that is convenient for you. So I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience, yours sincerely, and well, most likely with your first name and surname. Please write these three sentences.
So both, both of them are possible. I look forward. Just level and get hard. The week. I have a tight deadline for the job application as the job begins in less than a It would mean a lot to me if you could finalize this letter as soon as you possibly can. I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience. Yours sincerely, sincerely Yuri Kondratyev. So here's my example. Uh, please try to put together to put your letter together uh, and try to correct that you made for you. Okay, so Tatiana's letter. So, um, dear Michael, I am writing uh, to request a favor. I would be grateful if you write a reference letter for me. I'm applying for a position as a chief electrical engineer, more specifically, specifically double L. Uh, the job is in the Ministry of Energetics, uh, the high voltage department. The, the high voltage department. Let me explain in more detail. Could I suggest that you mention my current position in tender and sale department? Include uh, include information about well uh, department uh, and also include. It's like this. Okay, um, and also include information about my character. I would like you to describe me as a hard-working and active person, for example. In addition, if you could possibly, possibly mention my ability. So, like this. Uh, if you could possibly mention my ability with languages and communication with foreign customers, that, uh, comma, and foreign customers, comma, that would be excellent. If you remember, I am fluent in English and French. Okay. The deadline for the application is the end of this week. It would be great if I received uh, the letter from you not later than this Friday morning. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Uh, yours sincerely, Tatiana Selesnova. Okay. So we don't write Mr. Fred. Well, if Fred is a surname, that is okay. But if Fred is a first name, then it's a mistake. You don't say Mr. Vasya. You say Mr. Ivanov. So Mr. plus surname. 
So if Fred is a surname, no problem with that. Uh, I'm writing to ask you to do me a favor. Please could you write a reference letter for a job for me? Uh, the job I'm applying is in programming, in particular JavaScript. More specifically, I want to be able to give a big course for programmers of your company. So let me explain in more detail. I have been programming for five years, so my experience in programming is very big. I would like to describe my idea. I want to improve the skills of programmers in your company. To my mind, if, not is, uh, if a, a company has good, good and, and clever workers, the company will, re will reach success. Would you be able to deliver me this letter by the end of the month? Now, I have lots of invitations, but I want to work in... Uh, in a big programmer's company uh, as Intel first of all. Intel is very big corporation and popular in the whole world. Secondly, secondly, I prefer to work in the USA where the headquarters are situated. Are situated. In conclusion, uh -huh. okay. Uh, so, um, just one second. Um, I have lost this. Second, where uh, the headquarters are situated. In conclusion, I regularly use products of the company. I will be thankful, one L in thankful. Thankful if you could mail me later uh, the letter as soon as you can. If you could mail me the letter as soon as you can. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yours sincerely. And okay. So, uh, Natalia, should I download any additional program in order to be able to copy the text? I've tried to do it in the Word, but I haven't been able to do it. So, uh, the way you do it is actually you, uh, well, uh, you copy the text with your mouse, and then with the right button of your mouse, you click uh, and, say, and press copy. If you're working from a computer, and from what I can see, you're working from a desktop computer not from a mobile phone. Um, we can stay after this lesson and uh, we will turn on the microphone. I'll turn on the microphone for you and I can explain it in Russian. So this we can we can we can try this. Okay. Right. So uh, are there any questions about um, informal or semi formal letters? Uh, how many sentences should be in every passage? Uh, actually, it all depends. What's the most important thing is that um, you should have 150 words in the total. So sometimes there can be two sentences in the first paragraph, maybe three or, and three or four sentences in the second and the third. Uh, you should just make sure that there are 150 words, not less, maybe 160, 170 words in the total. So it doesn't really matter how many sentences there are if you are talking about letters. When we talk about essays, that will be slightly different. I will tell you about it later. So usually, uh, like the first, the first paragraph can be two or three sentences. Then the second paragraph usually there's three and four sentences, and the last paragraph there's three and four sentences too. Uh, but the most important thing is how many words in the total, because if you don't write 150 words, you will lose points for that. Okay, any other questions? Is it important to include different types of sentences, for example, question? Uh, okay, if, uh, absolutely. Uh, you need to use different uh, range of a range of different constructions, uh, but uh, you shouldn't include rhetorical questions in formal, in formal uh, letters. Uh, well, you can use conditional sentences. If you could do this, that would be great. 
and you can use other constructions. But what we are doing now is that we are trying to uh, write using good structure and correct grammar. That's what we're working on. Good, uh, correct grammar and precise vocabulary. Uh, we're going to work on the complexity of grammar and vocabulary uh, at our next round. So when we finish all the letters, we'll start working. Uh, so we'll start working on the complexity of vocabulary when you already know the structure of the letter. So we'll try to include some difficult uh, phrases, difficult, difficult pieces of vocabulary. All right, any other questions? So, if not, then I turn, uh, so, maybe there is. All right, so I...